citizen being. Well, I want to welcome you tonight to our Bible study here at Arbor Christian Fellowship. This is our midweek Wednesday study. We have some people around the table and those of you viewing at home. The scripture actually is some scriptures from the, the Psalms. The study title of the message is called IOUs. I, uh, our IOUs from God to us and our IOUs uh, to uh, God. First one is in Psalm 119.36. That's the the I, incline my heart to your testimonies, incline. And uh, that word incline in the, in the Hebrew here in the psalm is the word nakal, nakal. And it means to stretch ourselves toward God, to extend ourselves into uh, God's direction. It's extending ourselves and our heart towards God, towards Him. We, we see and realize here God's magnet, God's magnet, and God's majesty. Uh, did you ever do isometric exercises, and often when you exercise, you, you stretch and things, and uh, when I was in Marine Corps boot camp, uh, they exercised, this is called PT, physical training, and uh, they, they did it a lot, and we got in, we got in great shape, and then they're stretching and one of the great practices for us as Christians is to stretch ourselves towards God. Uh, sometimes stretching can be painful, but uh, it's, it's valuable. Incline my heart to your testimonies. Incline our heart, move our hearts towards uh, God's word. So we see the I in the IOUs. I incline my heart uh, to you. Second, second one is the O I O U. The second one is the O, Psalm 119.18, Psalm 119.18, which says, Open my eyes that I may behold wonderful things from your word. Some of the older Bibles will say from your law. It's the same thing. It's, it's God's word. But notice, uh, it's a prayer to ask God to open up our eyes so we can see. We can see clearly. We can see clearly clearly we can see precisely and uh, keep our eyes in that direction open my eyes to see wonderful things Psalm 119 and, and notice uh, that this is uh, wonderful things uh, there are some people that dread the law of God or dread the Old Testament or but uh, uh, here the psalmist uh, writes the psalmist writes Open my eyes that I may behold wonderful things from your law. Eyes open, eyes and hearts open. So we see in the eye of this IOU, we see the heart. We see the heart. Here we see the eyes. Eyes and heart uh, towards uh, the Lord. Incline my heart to you. Psalm 119, 36. Open my eyes. That I may see wonderful things. Psalm 119, 18. And then Psalm 86. Psalm 86. So uh, take your Bibles and turn to Psalm 86. By the way, let me give you a little quick background on the, on the book of Psalms. Uh, it's interesting. Uh, the Bible is divided up into certain types of books uh, in the Old Testament. First of all, there's the law, the books of the, of the law. And uh, that's Genesis, uh, Exodus, uh, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. And then you got historical books, historical books uh, beginning with Joshua, Judges, uh, and things. And then um, you've got in the middle of the Old Testament uh, the wisdom books, wisdom. And the word wisdom in Hebrew is the word hokema, H-O-K-E-M-A, hokema. And uh, it, it is not having so much a high IQ, uh, but knowing God's truth and applying it successfully in our lives. The Greek equivalent is the word Sophia. Sophia, we get the word philosophy. Hila, love. Sophia, love of wisdom. Uh, the true philosophy of, of Scripture. And uh, here we see in uh, the book of Psalms, uh, the, the book of, of, of Psalms, uh, Psalms 86 uh, 
the book of Psalms has us rightly related with God. The next book is a book of Proverbs, which teaches us how to be rightly related to fellow mankind, to one another. And what's interesting to me is that the book of Psalms comes before the book of Proverbs, because as the book of Psalms teaches us to be right with God, and Proverbs teaches us to be right with fellow man, uh, to be right with fellow man, it's a good thing to be first right with God. The, the first to be right with God. So, uh, verse 11 of Psalm 86, the writer is saying, Teach me your way, O Lord, I will walk in your truth. Unite my heart to fear your name. Unite my heart. There's the I O U. There's the U of I of spiritual I O U. Unite my heart. A couple of things that I want to pick apart here and uh, have you understand and, and apply. And uh, uh, first of all, teach me your way. God is our teacher. The, the Holy Spirit actually is our teacher uh, now. And Jesus was called the teacher. And here the psalmist says, uh, "Teach me." Teach me your way. By the way, this is a prayer of David. Uh, David gave us many, many of the Psalms. We're, of course, familiar with Psalm uh, 23. Any of you men and women that ever went into the military sometime during your minute, minute, military experience, maybe at the beginning of boot camp or going overseas, uh, the military chaplain gave you a card. Uh, and on the one side, it talked a little bit about prayer. And on the other side, it had... Uh, Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And some of the service guys uh, keep it in their pockets. I kept it in mind as a good luck charm. I really wasn't living for the Lord, but I appreciate the fact that the chaplains were there and gave me that, that card and uh, had it in my, my left breast pocket and things. And always thought that if a bullet hit, that that card would stop the bullet. Of course, that's kind of nonsense. Uh, and I never found out if it would or not. Thank the Lord. Praise God. But notice this verse 11 says, Teach me your way. He is the teacher. We are the student. Teach me your way. And we learn in two ways. We learn from the Word of God, and we learn from our experience. Uh, experience is, is very, very much a great uh, teacher. Teach me your way. I will walk in your truth. Notice the, the I and then the your. Your way, God, your truth, and your name. I will walk in your truth. And uh, then it says, unite, unite my heart to fear your name. So unite is the you in the spiritual IOU tonight. Uh, unite my heart to fear your name. Uh, it's talking about uh, Christ taking control. Us, as we say oftentimes in colloquial. Uh, being on the same page with God, being on the same page in the Word of God, and being on the same page with with God. Uh, unite my heart to fear your name. And uh, this fear is not the kind of fear uh, some people may have of being afraid of spiders or uh, being afraid of snakes or as a child, you know, I was afraid of the dark and you know, I had the little night light and things, or just, just afraid. Um, we don't have to live in fear. Um, uh, you know, F E A R, false expectations appearing real. Most of our fears never materialize, most of our fears are not real. But fear, F E A R, false expectations appear, uh, appearing real. False expectations appearing. That's why it says in the Lord's Shepherd, the Lord's Psalm, I, you know, fear not. I, I will fear no evil. God is our protector. Teach me your way, O Lord. I will walk in your truth. Unite my heart to fear. Uh, the heart here in the scripture captures the seat of our thoughts, of our being, of our emotions. But of course, we know the brain, the synapses. Uh, scientifically is, is where we think, but we use the term the heart. You know, I remember coaching Little League. I remember coaching Little League, and one of our kids, one of our boys, uh, there was a rule 
uh, there at, uh, in that Little League team that every boy and every girl had to at least play in the game. Even if it was at the end of the game or you put him in to pinch run or to pinch hits. And I try to get, I, I, I try to get every, every, every kid, uh, you know, to, to bat. I had one kid, he never made it out the entire season. You know, and he, he, I heard later on in high school after I moved away from there, he was being scouted by, by big leaguers and things. And then I had a, a kid that never got a hit, made an out and almost struck out every time. Of course, I, I played them both because we were supposed to play our, our, our players. But uh, here we see this inclination, this inclination, uh, being of the heart, having a strong heart, and trying. Notice the combination of heart and fear. The word fear, as I mentioned and alluded earlier, is not like fear of snakes or fear of the dark. It is a reverential respect and commitment to God. In the same way that I feared my dad. My dad was a good father. He was not a violent man, though he, being in the military and being a World War II veteran and uh, having seen combat and stuff, was in a violent uh, environment and things. But uh, I had a reverential fear and respect of my dad because I loved him. And it was basically not that I didn't want to get spanked or, or hit or pushed up. I'll confess, we had a few shoving incidents, uh, and we got in a big fight about something. I, I forget what it was, and it was a verbal fight. My mother was hysterical, and uh, but luckily, you know, we didn't get in a fist fight or anything. There was a little pushing and shoving. And finally, I said, Dad, you know what? I didn't ask to be born. It's your fault. I didn't ask to be born. And my dad said, well, if you'd asked, I'd have said no. <laughs> and we both busted out laughing, and it ended, uh, it ended the argument. Uh, it ended the argument uh, there. And uh, my dad, though he was not living for the Lord at that time, uh, we were able to lead both my mother and father uh, to saving the knowledge of Jesus Christ. And I had the ultimate privilege of baptizing my mother and father, and I just imagine how you got to humble yourself to have your your son baptize you. I mean, uh, so I, 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 I praise God. Notice verse 11, unite my heart to fear your name. That fear is a reverential respect, a reverential respect. And of course, uh, the last verse is Psalm uh, 90, 14, 90, 14. Oh, satisfy us in the morning with your loving kindness. There's that loving kindness again. That word loving kindness is a compound word in the English. Love and kindness. The two go hand in hand. Uh, the two go together. Loving kindness in the Hebrew is the word hesed, as I alluded to earlier. H-E-S-E-D. Maybe that's something I want you to learn tonight, maybe memorize and Keep in your heart, keep in your mind, maybe write it down on your notes or write it in your Bible. Hesed, H-E-S-E-D. And it literally means to, to love with feeling. Uh, to love in the gut. To, to love in the gut. Uh, a strong, strong. Uh, and uh, this is also has an attitude, an idea of loving kindness is lived out, showing kindness. Uh, showing love. I believe Christ was the kindest person uh, that ever walked the face of the earth. And with all the power he had, those who criticized him, those who persecuted him, he could have just said a word, snapped a finger, and they'd have been dead or dissolved or, or disappeared. But he was always, always kind to people. And by the way, one of the fruit of the Holy Spirit, according to Galatians 5, 23, is kindness having the kindness of Jesus Christ. And I challenge us to all work on uh, uh, taking steps to show a, a little more kindness, a little more kindness in our experiences and our comings and, and goings. Uh, notice, uh, oh, satisfy us in the morning with your loving kindness, that we may sing for joy and be glad all our days. Uh, this is a joy that comes from the Lord. And let me give you a little formula about joy. J 
O Y. J O Y. The J is Jesus. The O is others. And U, uh, the, the Y is you. And notice the, uh, the, the line. Jesus first, others second, and you last. I know, easier said than done. But as we put Jesus first and others uh, second, uh, God, will, God will use us to make some impact. And uh, we can, in our hearts, sing for joy. And uh, we will be glad. We will be glad all our days. I remember as a young boy, 1964, watching the Ed Sullivan Show. Guess who appeared on the Ed Sullivan Show? All right, it was the Beatles, uh, and uh, kind of interesting, uh, you know, kind of, kind of thing. And uh, then a few day, a few uh, weeks later, uh, anything that was British rock and roll had an audience in America. And uh, a few weeks after the Beatles, uh, there was another band that came called the Dave Clark Five. The Dave Clark Five. They weren't as famous or successful as the Beatles, but they had hit records. They toured America and one of their songs was glad all over glad all over and I want to kind of pirate that song and hijack it to a Christian uh, context uh, here notice here in Psalm 9 90, 14, oh O satisfy us in the morning with your loving kindness that we may sing for joy and be glad all our days to be glad all over all our days we have the joy of the Lord um, there's a difference between joy and happiness I've discovered perhaps you have too. Um, happiness depends on things happening the way I want them to happen and then I could be happy you know back in high school when I asked that girl out the cheerleader asked out for a date and she said yes okay that was that, that was happiness uh, and, and things uh, and things and uh, you know I got a lot of rejection here I you know and, and stuff uh, but that's beside the point uh, happiness depends upon things happening or happenings happening the way you want them to happen joy is when even things go bad maybe a negative doctor's report maybe calling in sick maybe an argument with family that, that you didn't win or nobody won uh, maybe some situation or some thing. Uh, joy is having joy in spite of some negative circumstances. Mm -hmm. And uh, we balance, we, we balance uh, a lot of our life with the good, the bad, and, and the ugly. I'm not talking about the Clint Eastwood movie, you know, the good, the bad, and the ugly with that haunting guitar riff throughout the movie. Uh, no, uh, we deal with the good, the bad, and the ugly often in our own lives, and our families, with ourselves, in our work, in our neighborhood, sometimes even in our churches. We're, we're all human. One thing my congregation knows and uh, is that I'm very human, and I make no bones about uh, being above people and being on a high horse. Hey, I got knocked off the high horse a long, long, long time ago, and it's great to not have to ride it and be a fake and a fraud. Uh, what you see is what you get, as they say, it is what it is. But you know what? God is in my life, and he satisfies us with his loving kindness. There's that I-O-U, I-O-U-S. The I incline our hearts towards him. The O, open our eyes that we would have this vision, that we would see things spiritually that we would see beyond just the physical, that we would see God at work, unite our hearts uh, with him, that we may fear his name, having that reverential respect for God. And it's a part of, of that love. And knowing that God will satisfy us with his hesed, H-E-S-E-D, his loving kindness loving uh, kindness so I want to challenge you I, I want I want to challenge you to uh, just live and cash in these IOUs that we have and the IOUs we owe other people uh, to uh, show 
display loving kindness in our our life. Uh, we we have a debt we have a debt to to pay an I O U. By the way, uh, the term I O U first came into the American public in 1795. They first started using uh, the term I O U. It's from I. And then O W E, like you owe money, and then you Y O U, and I O U. They shortened it to uh, I O U. The letters, but it's been around since uh, 1795. Uh, uh, Christ, we need to realize, did it for us. He paid it all for us, and we owe a debt of gratitude, and a debt of mercy, and a debt of ministry in loving other people, both at home, at work, in the church, and in other places. Well, that's that's the study uh, for for tonight. God bless you. Let me lead us in a word of prayer. And uh, it's just so good. Let me remind you that uh, this Sunday, 1045, on the same station, same channel, same Facebook, we have our, our worship uh, service. I'll be preaching a message that is geared to the young people and the young at heart. I'm talking about 70, 80, 90 year olds and beyond and younger, okay, our youth and the young at heart, the young at heart. Uh, we have an eternal, we have an eternal element into our lives. And so uh, this Sunday at 1045, hope to see you then. God bless you. Thanks for viewing and we'll see you next time. Let me pray. Father, we come and we thank you for this study. We thank you for your word. We thank you. We thank you for the IOU that we can incline our hearts, that you open up our eyes, that you unite, unite our hearts to fear your name and you satisfy us with your loving kindness and let us continually live in our IOUs. I pray for those watching on Facebook and our family there. Uh, across America and even sometimes across the world. We thank you, God, for what you're doing, and we pray, Lord, that you will prepare our hearts, and we pray that we'll get a victory Sunday, and that, Lord Jesus, that uh, we'll have victory. For I pray in Jesus' name, amen. Good night. God bless. See you Sunday.